and welcome to episode 91 of the Dinner Sisters podcast, where two sisters taking on the nightly challenge of dinner. I'm Kate Schultz, living and working in Rhode Island. I'm a passionate cook and recipe collector, always thinking about my next meal. And I'm Betsy Wallace. I live, work, and raise a family in Atlanta, Georgia. As always, I love dinner time, but can use help planning and cooking for my family of five. And Kate, I should say, we are out at our cabin this weekend. So, so nice. Yeah, so I'm sounding a little distinct because I'm not in my nice recording spot. Right. Are you, our, our lu- your luxurious recording basement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My little <laughs> setup. I'm away from my little setup. So, <laughs> Well, our goal with this podcast, we want to cook a little better, learn a little bit about food, and most importantly, figure out what the heck to have for dinner. Here's how this works. Like every week, we have three recipes that we cooked and reviewed from popular food blogs, internet chefs, like anywhere I can find something on the World Wide Web. We'll have all these recipes, any tips we talk about, our smorgasbord, and the shopping list on our website, dinnersisters.com. You can also get them sent directly to your inbox by subscribing to our newsletter, which I write every Sunday and send out to you. Well, like I would say 90% of it arrives on Monday morning. It depends upon what my Sunday looks like. But we send that to your inbox, you get a little preview, and uh, you can know what's going to happen before we listen. All right, Kate, so this week's episode, or this week's recipes were Tuscan Tortellini Skillet from the Kitchen, Easy Vegan Jackfruit Tacos by It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken, and Easy Thai Red Curry with Tofu from Killing Time, and that's T-H-Y-M-E. Very cute. A lot of, a lot of punny bo- blogs. This uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> please on words. <laughs> So, Betsy, here we are the week after Thanksgiving in the United States. And, you know, I was like, I think it might be a good one to have a little veggie focused meals. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. just kind of reset a little bit. Plus, you know, you and I talk all the time about having more vegetarian meals for dinner. And one way to do it is this idea of a meatless Monday routine, which is like on Mondays you eat vegetarian. Mm -hmm. It's a real simple way of doing it. And so I thought, let's find some recipes that can work for a weeknight dinner. You're not making any like anything too crazy or overly complicated. Um, Just something you can have when you come home from work. Yeah. And I think eating a little lighter on the weeknights with some simple recipes, it's also really just helpful in December when Mm -hmm. we tend to take on some project cooking or you're like, I want to bake super fun cookies. And then you're exhausted and thinking, well, now I don't want to make anything for dinner. Right. So, so I thought these, um, these recipes were useful in that sort of keeping the balance and, Keeping the keeping everything together as we move through the holidays. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So the first recipe actually really fits that bill because it's I think the quickest of all the recipes this this week, <laughs> and it is Tuscan tortellini skillet from the kitchen, and it's just a one pot one skillet meal, and it comes together super easily. So to make it, you just chop up a few fresh tomatoes, like any kind that you can find, and you pile it into a skillet with some olive oil, salt and pepper, and red pepper flakes if you want. You simmer until the tomatoes kind of have broken down a little bit, and then you increase the heat and add in a couple packages of frozen tortellini. And you just cook that until the tortellini are done. And then at the very end, you toss in a couple handfuls of fresh, fresh spinach and stir that in to wilt the leaves. And that's it. Like, <laughs> I think yeah. it's one of the shortest recipes we've done. Um, I, you know, obviously, uh, this is cheese tortellini. But, you know, if you're not doing Meatless Monday, I suppose you could do any tortellini. I serve this with a bunch of grated Parmesan cheese because I can never get enough. You know, how did this go for you, Betsy? So I made this actually right before Maida and I left on our trip to Rome last week, which was oh, that's right. super fun. But we were kind of, our parents came down because they were watching the, the other kids while we were going. And so I made this kind of as the dinner the night before we left. And mm. I'll tell you, mom really loved this. And, you know, nice. she's lately, our mom has been more like, well, I don't cook using a recipe and your dad and I just have sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I think she cooked for four kids for long enough. And yeah. was like, that's enough. Yeah. I'm over it. I get, I mean, I feel like, yes, I totally <laughs> get and respect this and you should do this for as long as you want. Mm-hmm. Um, but even she was like, well, this is so easy and delicious. And I have all these, you know, garden, garden veggies all the time. And then she has frozen a bunch of like Swiss chocolate right. and just tomatoes and things like that. Uh, so as long as you have a bag of tortellini in your freezer, I mean, and it was great. Everyone just really liked it too. 
Yeah, I was actually just going to say this recipe makes me want to have that bag of tortellini in the freezer, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like at all times, like, oh, I can just make this real quick. And I think it was just, it felt more like a meal than like boiling tortellini and then using jarred pasta sauce, Yeah, which like, no judgment if that's where you're going with your life. Like, great. Yeah. (laughs) But I felt like this felt more like a little fresher, a little more veggies in there. I actually halved this recipe, uh-huh. um, which is perfect for James and I in terms of portions. It kind of made enough for like two good dinner portions and one lunch. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. James loved it. Um, and so, I, you know, look, like this is not a flavor profile where you're gonna be like, wow, I've never had this before. <laughs> what a discovery. <laughs> what a discovery. <laughs> but the method itself is like, oh. Well, this is a nice weeknight meal. Holy cow, yes. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what we were all like. I am pleasantly surprised at how easy this was and how satisfying it feels. Yes. And, you know, also I was thinking, Betsy, this is a recipe I would give to somebody if they had were had never cooked before for themselves mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and was like, what's a great dinner recipe for me that has some vegetables in it, a little on the healthier side? Yeah. You know, because it's like you can't really screw it up. Yeah. So love it. There you go. I think one thing I'll note is that my tomatoes weren't super ju- juicy because it's like definitely off season. Yeah. So I added a little bit of water because I just wanted to make sure the tortellini steamed. Just like, mm-hmm. I don't know, ended up being like a couple tablespoons. And that just made it a little saucier, which is fine. So if you find you're like, hmm, I don't know how my tortellini are going to cook in the lack of sauce. Oh, yeah. That might be something to think about. Yeah. So yeah, this is my rating of four out of five. I'm also four to five on this. I mean, great. Love mm-hmm. it. Okay, so next, Kate, we have um, actually a, a recipe that a lot of people have asked me if we're going to try on the podcast, which mm. is Easy Vegan Jackfruit Tacos. People have been telling me about these jackfruit tacos. Mm-hmm. Uh, this recipe is by It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken. So I have two, Betsy. I've definitely heard of jackfruit tacos, like on the blogs and all the vegetarian sites. So I thought this would be a great recipe. And just like as a little primer, if you haven't heard of jackfruit before, it's a really common fruit that grows. It's like a tree fruit. Um, mm-hmm. It grows mainly in like Southern India, Borneo, Malaysia, and other subtropical countries. It, it's like a pretty big thing, right? It's it's like, think like an extra large spaghetti squash mm-hmm. is the shape of it. And it's like nubbly on it. Um, you cut it and it's fruit that you can eat ripe and sweet or like kind of green, underripe, and then like for savory things like curries. Um, yeah, it's like a simplification, but I think you get the idea. So vegans in the U.S. and other Western countries have been kind of using the unripe fruit as a meat substitute lately, um, probably because they saw all the curries that people make with the fruit in many Southeast Asian cultures, right? So yeah. this is kind of like in a, you know, a way of like using this food that I think a lot of people have been eating for a while in a different way. So that is your food lesson for this episode. <laughs> But for this recipe, we used a canned and brined unripe jackfruit. Um, I think you used a little different one, but that's kind of the, what you get in the States. I don't think anyone, maybe people in the real far south can grow jackfruit, but um, you need a very warm climate. Anyway, to make the tacos, you slice up the fruit so it kind of like shreds. My ta- my jackfruit kind of came in the can. It was already pre-sliced, but you're like double slicing it. Mm-hmm. Um, then you just heat some oil in a skillet, add some onions and garlic, cook until the garlic is, uh, the onions are translucent. The garlic smells good. Then you add in some j- the jackfruit, a little bit of j- vegetable broth, and then taco spices, you know, cumin, chili powder, and smoked paprika. Then you just simmer it until the liquid is about halfway absorbed. And then the fun part, which is you can take a potato masher to the jackfruit. So jackfruit kind of like has a structure that when you mash it all up, it looks like it shreds. Mm -hmm. So you get kind of that like shredded chicken texture or shredded pork texture. That makes sense. Um, It's, you know, you just simmer it for a bit longer after you do that. And then you make some tacos and she suggests pickled red onions, avocado, things like that. Um, Yeah. How did this go, Betsy? All right. So I think I could probably find different varieties of jackfruit at, like various places in Atlanta, but since I was Mm -hmm. at Publix and, you know, we were making this on a week, I was a little bit busy. I thought, well, I'm just going to get whatever jackfruit they have there. Interestingly, they had two pre-marinated jackfruit situations. Oh. So you could get Tex-Mex flavor or you could (laughs) get like uh, more of a curry flavored one. Oh. And they came in this little package that looked 
I mean, almost kind of like, I don't know, like a tofu package, not really, but it was pre-shredded oh, mm. too. So, oh, yeah. So it was fine. So I actually did not have to do, I didn't want to add all this other, because I was like, well, this is what we're doing here is Got adding it. the flavoring. So I just, what they said is to do is to heat it up in the skillet, which I did. Um, and then I put it in the taco, tacos and use the avocados mm-hmm. and things like that, that I had. I thought it was fine because I had it in that little package. I just kind of made it for myself and, you know, mm-hmm. um, right. had it for lunch. It was like over six dollars for like oh. a ten ounce portion of this jackfruit, wow. pre marinated, um, which isn't a lot. I mean, I think it was like six fifty nine or something like that. Mm. Um, I just thought, like, for the money, I felt like my whole time I was thinking this, I was like, gosh, I should just like black beans and sweet potatoes. Like (laughs) that seems to be, you know, if I'm making a vegan taco, like I thought this was totally fine. I thought that I didn't love it. It wasn't something where I was like, whoa, I'm going to seek this out again and Mm -hmm. make this for everyone. I know I was like, okay, this is fine. Um, Right. But kind of pricey for me to buy. Uh, And I can see why people would maybe use it where you have an abundance of jackfruit and that's like an ingredient mm-hmm. that is budget friendly and like useful in your cuisine. Maybe. I yeah. I used, I, I don't remember how much I paid for the can of jackfruit. I don't think it was $6. I got it from Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. So mine was like plain and brined. Um, I will say like to the recipe, the recipe worked really well. Mm-hmm. Exactly how it said it would. Um, <clears throat> and the taco flavors were nice. I wish I had kind of rinsed out the jackfruit because it tasted a lot like the can. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. You know? Um, and that was just my fault. I should have done that. But I think the flavors are good. You know, I, I, I yeah, if you're, don't buy the $6 pre-marinated stuff. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, unless you're like in the situation where you're at, Betsy, I'm not trying to, I'm like, <laughs> not trying to give you a hard time, but like, yes, yes. like, why'd you buy that? But I get it. Like, if you can find it in a more like affordable thing, I think honestly, if this were, this is a recipe I'd make if I had someone coming over that I knew was like vegan or vegetarian and maybe hadn't tried this before with some black beans, I think would be really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was, um, it also like jackfruit itself doesn't have a lot of protein in it. So I made the tacos and it was like, oh, I'm hungry. Still. Yeah, and you kind of warned me on that too. So that was the other reason I was like, first, this is expensive. Plus, Kate warned me we're going to be hungry. I am not making this as like for my like, family of five, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, like right. <laughs> here we go, yeah. kiddos. Each have like one tiny check for time. right. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so yeah, I think if you're looking for a vegan taco option, yes. I would do like a can of this mashed up like as one of the like a taco spread. Yes. There you go. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Um and this recipe worked really well. So I um I found some tiny tortillas that were actually really cute. Um from it's the Vermont Tortilla Company mm-hmm. if you're in the northeast cute. and you're wanting to look for them. And um I find them in the refrigerated section of Whole Foods and so these were like maybe 3 inch wide tortillas which was really fun for this yeah um again like if you're making like if you've got a whole variety of tacos and this is one of the options mm-hmm. super fun know, might not be bad yeah. yeah so i think like in terms of the recipe um i give it a four but in terms of, like jackfruit in general uh, i don't know <laughs> if i make it again yeah but it's not the it's not the fault of the recipe right. itself right right yeah i'm gonna recuse myself since i use tex-mex flavored jackfruit yeah, and just like I don't think you get to judge. threw it in a taco shell. Um, but just so you know, that was my experience. I'll share that with Got everyone. It. Yeah. So our last recipe is easy Thai red curry with tofu from Killing Time. I picked this recipe because of the tofu prep. Actually, it was a way that I'd seen before, but I hadn't done. So I thought it'd be fun to try out. Mm-hmm. So to start, you freeze your tofu like the night before. Right. And then to prep it for the dish, you actually throw the whole frozen tofu block into a pot of salted boiling water. Mm -hmm. You boil it for 15 minutes and then you drain it off and then you don't press the tofu. Yeah. Which was interesting to me. Right. Right. Um, And then to make a crispy tofu, which she she likes for this recipe, you just cut it into cubes and then fry it in a bit of oil. You don't need to toss it in the cornstarch, which I'm used to doing. Um, You just kind of fry it up. And then have put that to the side. So that's how you make your crispy tofu, which I thought was interesting. I never frozen tofu before. 
And then to make the curry, you just start with your base of onions, garlic, and ginger. This is simmered in a bit of water, actually, to start, which is different. And then once that's kind of, you know, the onions have gone translucent and smells good, you add in some sliced red pepper and mushrooms. And then you add a good amount of red curry paste. And then the coconut milk, fish sauce, and sambal olek chili sauce. I actually don't have that, so I used sriracha. It was great. You simmer it for about 15 minutes or so, just enough time to kind of make some rice. And then to finish it off, you squeeze a lime in there, a zest of lime, and then you squeeze a lime to kind of finish it, which was delicious. Get served with rice and the crispy tofu on top. So how'd this go for you, Betsy? Well, like these kind of curries are right up my alley flavor wise. Mm. And I'm definitely this, this winter, I'm thinking more of these quick curries and more soups. Um, mm-hmm. because I like both of them. This, every time we make one of these, I'm like, Oh yes, this is delicious. This is what I want to be eating on a weeknight, which is right. Great. I also, um, I left the chili sauce totally out so that I could just, I added some sriracha at the end on mine, just to top that it. makes sense. Um, to make it family friendly. Um, you know, and my, my kids will kind of eat this like a tofu, curry tofu with a little okay. veg and the coconut milk. Uh, I'm not sure I tasted a huge difference in the tofu with the tofu prep. Kate, we've done so many different yeah. types of tofu prep kind of on this <laughs> podcast. We've experimented, I feel like, a fair amount yeah. with this. And I'm not sure looking back, I would be like, oh, yes. This one was when I really shined yeah. or something like, I mean, they're all kind of like, mm-hmm. I feel like we all kind of end up in the same place in the end. I don't know, which is delicious. And I mean, I think it all tastes good, but I'm I'm not sure I yeah. would go through the freezing and then. Yeah. I think this is like, if you hate pressing tofu, that like annoys you. Because yeah. like, there's always something in the kitchen that like annoys people yeah. for no apparent reason. Uh-huh. Right. I don't mind prep. I don't mind pressing the tofu. There are other things I hate doing that I always try to find another way to do it. If like the idea of just like pulling the frozen tofu out of the freezer and popping in boiling water and not having to worry about pressing sounds appealing to you, definitely do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, it w- you know what I mean? I think it was like as good as pressed tofu. Yes. For me. It was a little bit of a different texture. It was a little more open. Mm-hmm. But it was, it definitely got the moisture out. It made it chewy, which was good. But, you know, I, I'm not so much a tofu connoisseur that I could be like. <laughs> yeah, where I'm like. <laughs> like really get into the differences. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, and I agree with you, Betsy. I love these kinds of curries. I l- love the idea of adding extra vegetables. You did that, right? You added something other than yeah. red pepper? So, yes, I added some extra veggies in here because I've been doing the misfit market veggie delivery. And we're going to talk about a smorgasbord. So I won't go into it now, but she does say in the top of this recipe, this is flexible. Mm-hmm. And I think it really would be. And I think I will use this um, recipe uh, again. I mean, I definitely will. Yeah. yeah like what did you end up adding? I added, so I had two summer squash. So I added, Oh, nice. Yeah. With the, um, peppers i had different like i said some green peppers some red peppers the mushrooms and then some summer squash Mm -hmm. and then the tofu nice yeah Yeah. so here's where i reveal my truth right you did the jackfruit yeah james actually really hates tofu that's funny (laughs) (laughs) and so but i wanted i was like cooking dinner we didn't have like anything in the in the fridge for him to like nosh on for lunches and i was like oh we've got the extra chicken thighs Mm -hmm. so i made the curry took a little bit out for the tofu piece and take pictures and things, and then I put chicken in oh, it. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> so for like a meatless Monday, I was a total fail, but it was delicious with the chicken. So if y'all have some like, you know, chicken, extra chicken mm-hmm. from rotisserie chicken or something, like this is the place to do that. Um, I, You know, yeah, like I said, this was just really nice and it was good with the rice. It was a delicious weeknight meal. Um, I agree. I think I would sub other veggies in. Yeah. If you have other things that you like. and um. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure how to rate this recipe because the I think it went really well. So this is like a hot this is like a four to five for me, but I'm not sure I would do the tofu the same way again. But it's not the fault of the recipe. I'm just like, eh, not my thing. But if again, if you don't like pressing tofu and you just wanted this you like the idea of just like throwing something into a pot of boiling water. Yeah. This might be for you. Maybe that's maybe this is your jam. Um uh, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. also giving this a four out of five. I, I liked the fact that it was very flexible. And the flavors were mm-hmm. great. And if you're kind of stocking that sort of 
pantry again with the fish sauce and that type of thing. Um, mm. you know, this is a good one. All right, Kate, what's your winner on the week? So I was pretty torn, mm-hmm. but I ultimately think the red curry won my mm. heart. Yeah. It was yeah. very good. I'm going with the tortellini because it was such a crowd pleaser when I served it. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. If any of these recipes sound good to you, make sure to check out our show notes and grocery list at dinnersisters.com. There you'll find links to all the recipes, any tips or techniques we discussed, you know, everything we talked about. If you'd like to chat more with us, please ask to join our Dinner Sisters Facebook. We love meeting new people through that group. It's so fun. And you can find us on Facebook at Dinner Sisters Podcast. We're also that on Instagram, by the way. Yeah. All right, Kate, before we head to the smorgasbord, we're taking a break. Okay, so for the smorgasbord this week, we're going to talk um, a little bit about our favorite vegetarian sites, vegetables, all things kind of... An offer from a partner podcast. Yeah. I mean, we got a lot. It's like truly a smorgasbord today. So I true. Think. So true. Um, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to start some of my favorite vegetarian sites and cookbooks and resources that I like to go to when I'm when I'm feeling like I need more veggies in my diet. So... Mm-hmm. We've talked about her before. I know everyone knows the, the website Cookie and Kate, but mm-hmm. I mean, so consistent. I just feel like the recipes. Yeah. Super, super solid. Super solid. And I have a good friend who's vegetarian, Katie, who listens to the podcast. And she just like swears by those um, recipes and cooks them yeah. all the time. So if you have not checked out her blog yet or website yet, and you're looking for just a huge variety of super solid recipes. I would do that. My other favorites is I have picked up kind of along the way at some like used bookstores and things like that or Deborah Madison's Mm -hmm. books. Oh, definitely. Also so good. And I have her vegetarian suppers books, which is an older one, but it's just every time I flip through it, I think it's just recipes for like some broccoli rabe on toast and then she's got some wine pairings and it just makes you realize how simple dinner can be with like some vegetables yeah. some cheese some bread a little bit of wine and she really makes it unfussy and uncomplicated um in a way that always inspires me to cook more vegetarian food and i just like her writing so yeah i have those um do you want to talk about your favorite sites? Yeah. So I think I just, I had one favorite site that I wanted to bring up, which is the Almond Eater. And we've actually used her recipes a couple times on the the Mm -hmm. podcast. She's not completely vegetarian, but she's definitely very vegetarian, kind of vegan oriented. You know, so there are some like meat episodes, like fish and some, a few meat recipes on there, but a lot of vegan recipes, a lot of vegetarian recipes, not complicated, not a lot with like specialty vegan items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, which I feel like sometimes if you don't have a vegan kitchen, you're kind of like, oh, man, like to go buy 12 pounds of cashews now. And where's the nutritional yeast? Like, you know, so so I really like her site and it's very clean, easy to read, which sometimes, you know, is not the case. So if you want to check the the almond eater out, that's um, a good one for you. And the other one I wanted to recommend is um, a vegan cookbook that I really like because it's fun. Her recipes are clear and interesting. And we I did a cookbook club with it a couple years ago. It's called Isa Does It. Amazingly easy, wildly delicious vegan recipes for every day of the week. And kind of like um, by her name is uh, Isa Chandra Moskowitz and um, kind of like the Denver Madison Betsy. It's very like vegan recipes, but for a weeknight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're looking to kind of maybe expand your dinner repertoire, she's be, she'd be one I check it out from the library. See if you like her. Um, her writing is very straightforward. The recipes are fun. Um, so that might be one that maybe you haven't heard of before, but may want to check out. Yeah. And Kate, I will also add that I was on dinner, a love story the other day looking for mm. a pork ragu, which is not vegetarian recipe. And <laughs> I was reading that she is going to have a more vegetarian and veggie forward focus on her blog going forward. And I think she's already kind of done that. So interesting. Yeah. So okay. that's another resource. Cause I know um, she's got some longtime fans and you know, that's a nice yeah. solid site and cookbooks and a trusted source. And I thought it was interesting that she, for sure. um, that she mentioned that and that she's shifting the focus of her blog too. I thought that was interesting. So, okay. So 
two more things before we sign off here, Kate. Yes. Uh, I want to talk about our podcast pal, Marie Feebach of Feed Your Family Tonight. She is really generously offering our listeners a 10% discount off of her holiday planning guide for 2019. So if you go to her website, feedyourfamilytonight.com, you can go on there, go into her shop, find her holiday guide. And Marie is like, she's the organized person I wish I was. Yes. And (laughs) practical too, because she's like, she's doing it. She's working and she's got kids and she's just knows the reality of being the cook in this situation. That is really true. Right. I think sometimes you look at these meal planning things and you're like, that's cool. But I have like things to do. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So I, and she takes, uh, you know, pieces into consideration that I think are really interesting. So if that sounds good to you, you can go to her website, feedyourfamilytonight.com. She's offering Dinner Sisters listeners a little discount of 10%, which is very generous of her. And when you're in the shop and you just check in, you're checking out, use the code sisters and you've got the discount. Um, so yeah, we're kind of fun, it's fun to have a little, uh, affiliate relationship with her and, um, point people to a good resource. Yeah. Kate, I love that she put this together too, because there are people like me (laughs) who just don't want to think about this stuff. I know she gave us a sneak peek of it and I might be working through that today actually to get myself organized because it's, she's really, it's really comprehensive. It's really, it's a good resource. So I'd encourage you guys to check it out. But Betsy, speaking of resources, uh-huh. you've been getting these boxes of veggie fun. Yes. So a couple of weeks ago, Dorothy in the Facebook group had mentioned that she's been starting to get Misfit Misfits Market boxes. They are out of Philadelphia. Mm. They kind of source um, vegetables that maybe wouldn't otherwise find a home. I don't like extras from farmers markets and things that aren't going on the grocery store sh- shelves and uh, stuff like that. And then they will send them out to you. So I tried it out. I'm getting oh, the yeah. five, like family of five who cooks a lot package. Um, okay. So I get a box every week. I might go to every other week, kind of feeling it out. Uh, it's about $35 plus $5 shipping. So the whole thing costs about 40 bucks. And okay. it is a good amount of produce in there. I will, I did a little um, box opening on Instagram live maybe two weeks ago. And I'll do another one of those and I'll put a picture on the Facebook group of how much was in there. But it was like, you know, squash and peppers it's and potatoes lot. and fruit and onions and just parsley. There's herbs and a whole bunch of stuff. And it's really um, been helping me cook just like with that curry we were talking about. I was like, oh, I've got those squash. I should use them. Let me just throw them in yeah. here, which has really been challenging me to just add more veg into everything we're making, which yeah has been really great. And I will also say I they sent each time I've gotten a box, which is three times now, it usually comes with two little packages of cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes. And Yum. which is good, but I'm kind of like, ah, I don't know if I love tomatoes this time of year. You know, they're never like great. They're mm-hmm. fine, but they're, you know. Um but in the bat in the um Food of the Italian South cookbook by Katie Parla who I interviewed and we're going to have a little episode with her coming up here. There is a recipe for marinated vegetables. So I slow cooked those in the oven, put them in some, with some olive oil and used her recipes to kind of like do some marinated vegetables in my fridge now. Mm. So it's also delicious. I feel like it's taking a little bit of the, um, like, because I didn't have to go grocery shopping and spend an hour, buying these vegetables yeah i felt more inspired to just like do that so there you go well that's fun yeah Yeah. love that and i just thought you know just goes to show that our listeners are amazing Uh and have such great suggestions and join our facebook group and you'll learn all these secrets not necessarily from us but but from everybody else who's just like got this wealth of knowledge i think it's so amazing so all right. Mm-hmm. Kate, coming up next week, we have Savory Pies. What an inspired episode. I know. I mean, who doesn't, A, who doesn't like a pie? And B, let's make pie for dinner. Yeah. That's essentially I love it. it. Right? I love it. Yes. So I'm really looking forward to this. James was is very much looking forward to this mm-hmm. week. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, it's pie week. I was like, <laughs> yes. <You're> like, <laughs> happy holidays. Here we go. Right. Yes. <laughs> 
All right, so that's what's for dinner this week. See you next time on The Dinner Sisters. We'll save a spot at the table for you. Would you like a little dinner in your inbox every week? Subscribe to our newsletter by going to our website at dinnersisters.com. There we've got show notes, grocery lists, all sorts of fun stuff. If you have any ideas, first of all, join our Facebook group. We'd love to hear from you there. Or you can shoot us an email at dinnersisterspodcast at gmail.com. Last thing, as per usual, if you like what you're hearing, please review and subscribe. So thanks and happy eating.